Gwyneth, do you turn off the lights when you leave your bedroom? I do. Cameron, do you turn your thermostat down to 65 degrees and wear a sweater? Yes, I do. Hey, I bet you leave the water running when you brush your teeth. Uh-uh. Hey, why don't you go buy a hybrid car? Hey, I have one. Oh. What are you doing to save energy and make us less dependent on foreign oil? Read our lips. Conserve. Een maand lang kijkt VPRO Tegenlicht hoe we samen de energiecrisis kunnen bestrijden. In ons archief vind je verhalen over technologische oplossingen en de doorbraak van duurzaam. Is deze crisis het moment voor burgerinitiatieven en een andere kijk op de rijkdommen van de natuur? Welkom in het archief van de toekomst. There is an explosion of innovation happening around alternative fuels, alternative energy, an explosion. I have a pile of letters on my desk that high of people saying, come look at what I'm trying to do around solar, around wind, around nuclear, around hydrogen, on biofuels. There is an explosion happening. This industry is maturing rapidly and it's moving from the laboratory to commercial business. Many of the people who have come to visit us at this conference have come from the integrated circuit business and they say this is just like 30 years ago with a transistor coming in to replace vacuum tubes and suddenly a whole new market uh, vista opened up. The panorama of all of those possibilities is being uh, seen and tried here at uh, over a thousand exhibits. It's, a, it's a, an incredibly exciting time for all of us. I don't think the average person on the street really could fathom how big this industry could be. We are seeing sustainable and clean technologies ramping up across all geographies, all industries, and in the most unusual places. The primary energy economy will disappear because it is impossible to change from being a seller of oil, gas, uranium, and coal uh, to the role of uh, a seller of solar radiation or wind. That's impossible. Wind and solar radiation is a common good. Not owned by anyone. Je kunt ze alleen daar een beetje zien, anders moeten we even naar de buren. Dat mag ook. Ik heb het mooiste dak volgens de mannen. Nou, ik heb er twaalf. En dat is voor. Uh, ik heb deze maand heb ik mijn eigen energie gebruikt. Dat is toch leuk? Hè? Ik heb het bijgehouden. Ik betaal per maand veel minder bij de NUON. En de NUON belt mij op of ik alsjeblieft terug wil. Nou, ik denk het niet. Want uh, ze hebben het nog nooit. Ik heb hè, 44 jaar was ik. Klant, ze doen nooit wat. En nu opeens gaan ze maar van alles aanbieden. Ja, to the loo, dacht ik. Ik blijf lekker hier. Ik denk in een geglobaliseerde wereld dat mensen al heel snel het gevoel hebben dat ze de controle kwijt zijn. En mensen krijgen toch denk ik steeds meer het gevoel van we moeten iets gaan doen. En nou ja, dan moeten we toch maar beginnen bij onszelf. Wat je op dit moment ziet is dat de bedrijven en de burgers veel meer initiatieven nemen en al bezig zijn met die economie van de toekomst. Er zijn inmiddels meer dan 40 energie, of meer dan 50 energiecoöperaties en nog vele honderden in oprichting die allemaal samen hun eigen energie gaan opwekken en die laten zeggen van wij willen niet meer bij die grote bedrijven, wij gaan het zelf doen. En zo zijn er ook coöperaties die gaan samen moestuinen doen en nou ja, op allerlei manieren nemen mensen zelf het heft in handen. De essentie van burgercollectief is precies dat we dat debat opnieuw aangaan. Dat we opnieuw leren nadenken over de beschikbare middelen en de, de noden die er zijn en hoe we die aan elkaar gaan koppelen. En welke governance model, welke manier het burgercollectief, de marktoverheid, we daartoe gaan aanwenden. Ik 
I think climate change is a moment when we are coming face to face that our technology, the, the, the way we've been doing things up to now, isn't working. We actually are not able to control, um, we can't just pull out more technology in order to fix this. It really involves changing ourselves. This makes climate change not just an issue of the environment, but an issue of our culture, because it's really ourselves that we need to be changing and understanding in order to be in relationship with, with the Earth. When people talk about solutions to the ecological crisis, what they usually mean is, we can find some technological way of not burning fossil fuels, or maybe we can invent a giant vacuum pump that will pull the CO2 back down out of the atmosphere. Maybe you can, probably not. But more than that, the question is, what's the problem you're solving? What do you think the problem is with this society that we've got to this point? I don't think it's a technological problem. I think it's a, it's a cultural problem, even a spiritual problem that we've got in our relationship with the rest of life, in our relationship with our own uh, desire and our own greed and our notion of what we mean by progress, which is usually very narrowly defined. Um, to me, there's a kind of spiritual emptiness at the heart of it. We don't really know what relationship we want to have with the Earth. Look, if I think about my own daughter, right, she's 12 years old. Well, she could easily be alive in the year 2100. So I'm imagining my daughter, 90 years old, about to give a birthday speech to family and friends, and suddenly, over on the mantelpiece, she sees a photograph of me, her departed ancestor, and decides to tell the room instead what this person left as a legacy to her and to the world around her. And, you know, I can imagine that. I can bring it back, you know, with my eyes shut that moment. And it makes my hairs stand on end, imagining my daughter when she's 19, what she would say about me. Imagine if you could uh, see life in a time lapse, but a tree time, time lapse. So mm. the tree would just be slowly growing and you'd see humans expanding, war, kings in, kings out, kings back. And this tree, all this time has just been here. Well, the bark's really interesting because there's just so many colors. Mm. There's a big hole there. You can actually climb through it. You know, I was just thinking, Cass, you know, if you have children, or grandchildren, you know, they could be alive when this tree's still alive, but you'll be dead, I might be dead. I think you'll be dead. I'll definitely be dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and this That's tree will keep on going. You know, if you think about how societies change, you can think, okay, let's change the political institutions. That's one way. Or you can change your economic system. That's another way. But there's a third way, which is absolutely vital, which is changing the culture. And by culture, I mean the kinds of worldviews, the Weltanschauung that people have, the assumptions and beliefs, the way people look at the world. We need something more than just politics or economics. We need a closer, more integrated spiritual connection with the earth. Wil je meer weten over duurzaam gedrag? Of zoek je naar technologische oplossingen voor de klimaatcrisis? Duik in het Archief van de Toekomst en ontdek deze afleveringen en andere thema's van VPRO Tegenlicht.